Welcome to round four of the Man Made Mead Tournament of 2021. We're here for the grand finale of this awesome tournament that saw 15 meads compete against one another. We started with 15, we're down to the final two. I can't believe we're here. It's been quite the ride. Our final two competitors are mead number six and mead number 10. These two meads have been kicking butt and taking names. This is going to be a big showdown between a traditional mead and a bold, mellow mouth. Frank, who do you think will win this round? I have no idea. This could be a toss up. Both meads are amazing. I know that with us starting with so many, we're now down to the best of the best. So, hmm. Let's recap where we began. We started with the board like this in round one and ended it with it like this. After round two, we were left with this, and after round three, we had this. This tournament has been a blast, and I can't wait to, to see the results. Charles, it's been a pleasure serving with you on this commentator's panel. Something tells me this is the last time we'll see each other. Frank. Charles. It's, it's been a pleasure, Wheatbuck. On to the grand finale. Here we are for round four of the Man Made Me Tournament of 2021. You can see the board is pretty clear, and that's because we started with 15, we paired it down to eight, down to four, and now we're down to our final two. We have number 10 and number six. Now, if you'd like to know every mead that was entered, that'll be below, but specifically the two that are here now are uh, what we've gotten down to. I have BC and Tony. If you've watched the previous videos, you've seen the whole event and everything, and I encourage you to go back because there have been some really fun meads. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, I, I'm anticipating this one. I think this one's gonna be a bit brutal. So we're gonna go ahead and taste test these and decide of the two, which one, uh, I'm gonna say better, but I have a feeling that we're gonna get into some nitty-gritty <laughs> of yeah. what better means yeah. by the end of this. So um, on the green right here is number six, and on the Yellow, what is this? Red. <laughs> this is number 10. <laughs> so, let's... Do you need your eyes? <laughs> it's all the mead flung through. Yeah. I'm starting to see. All right. Same um, colors. <laughs> let's start with number 10, in okay. this case. Number 10. So this is, we already know it, the bottle's in front of us. This is a Tupelo traditional mead. We both use Tupelo honey a fair amount. Yeah, so. quite a bit. I used some last night. One thing that's fascinating about this Tupelo honey that I've never noticed is the amount of uh, licorice-like notes. Now, it's not like directly black licorice sure. but it's like a hint of it. You mm -hmm. get a little bit of it there. That I've never noticed it. Anise, fennel family of flavors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got like a candy flavor yeah. to it. It's got like a rich, chewy lusciousness that some other honeys when fermented out like this, don't carry along yeah. with them. And I do enjoy about this, but the, the alcohol is not super present. Mm -hmm. It's it's there, but it's on the, on the back end. I don't know what the ABV on this is. 15.4. There we go. Which is that's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. And for it to be yeah. hidden so well is impressive. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know how old this is. He didn't include that with, with that information. It kind of has this... Uh... graininess to it. not texturally but like um like oats or like buckwheat or like the sorts um, of grains like a cereal yeah. <clears throat> cereal yeah that mm -hmm. has that sort of thing going on interesting and i really like that mm -hmm. that's not something that i would really generally think about but it's got that or like even really look for mm -hmm. but it's so apparent to me and i think that's just the yeast that he used mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's that is that i'm picking that up from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just so it, it makes the complexity of it so unique from some of the other traditionals that i've had mm -hmm. that i i just think it's super cool yeah <clears throat> yeah that but, it ties it together Big warm hug, like yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. it's a really comfortable place to be in. Yes, mm -hmm. and then again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, like potentially the water that he used, mm -hmm. yeah, has made texturally a pretty like soft, 
inviting palette. And I think that even though it's not super thick and super lush, mm -hmm. like maybe what we're about to taste is, because we all know what, what's happening here, is going to be like, it's still soft and it's like sleeping on a feather pillow. You know, mm -hmm. it's got that kind of thing going on. So I will, I will say this, before we vote, when we vote, we're going to do it all at once. Oh, okay. Instead of someone voting and someone voting and someone voting, it's going to be three, no, two, one. No tiebreakers. No, well, I mean, there could be a tiebreaker. Or not, well, no tiebreaker. There could be a, a contentious, like, get together, oh, wait. Get together, get together. <laughs> the fourth person comes in. Bring in a ring. <laughs> There's a fourth number that appears. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to switch over now to number six. That was number ten. It's number six. I'm going to rip my numbers in half. So. Yeah. <laughs> The nose on this is just incredible. Yeah, the... It tells you exactly what you're about to experience. The preservation of, of berry and... Uh, I mean, it tastes... It, it smells like a berry, which I know is odd, but like when you ferment something, sometimes it's so altered by the end. You get mm. weird flavors that pop out, things that just don't match. What I... What I think is so great about this is that it's got that tartness to back it up, the, tar the sugar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everything is like, everything might be at like a 10, but everything's there, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Everything's amplified, but it's all together and really, really well balanced. Yeah, no, the balance on this, I, I don't know that there's anything I could recommend. To change about the balance on this. The yeah. acid's perfect, the tannin is grippy and holistic, the sweetness is right where I want it to be for it to taste like. And it's honey sweetness, sweetness. that's what's that's right. important to me. Mm -hmm. It's not just sugary, it is a floral honey sweetness, right. whatever varietal. If you do a really long exhale after mm -hmm. you take a sip of it, it's just honey after honey after honey coming out, mm -hmm. which is Oftentimes, kind of difficult to achieve in something like this. Where the viscosity so is really nice too. Mm. And again, still has that like herbaceous, earthy, like wet forest floor, mm -hmm. tobacco, cigar box, cedar box type thing going mm -hmm. on. It's mm -hmm. not as predominant as some other meads I've had like this that are like going back to what we had a few weeks ago, like. That was very herbaceous, very earthy, and it was really, really, really cool. Uh, this doesn't have quite that ex extreme of right. a character, but uh -huh. it is there. It's still like it's searching. You have to search for it. I think mm -hmm. a little harder, mm -hmm. but it's it, which I think is part of the fun of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's the the real challenge. Both of these are executed superbly. Yes. And but they both present radically different styles of the meat spectrum. You have this thing that is utilizing honey alone and highlighting the honey by itself. Mm -hmm. And then you have something that is also highlighting honey, but mostly highlighting, I would say, berry flavor in that fermentation of, of berry. Now there is honey character still present, mm -hmm. but you got a mellow mel versus a traditional. And execution, I would say, even harder for me, execution on both is also very, very good. They're not just good by themselves, but they you can tell that the people who did them had method to their madness, mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of care, mm -hmm. I think, in both of these. Like, whoever was making these said they were really making sure that they took the time and there was, like, love. Intentionality. Intention, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And um, I have to say, I don't think of everything that we've had today. I really, really felt like that. Yeah, there were some good ones, but I think the amount of like intensity that they all brought. But, well, I think to your point, you can you could care about a mean, for, you could love it and do everything you're supposed to do. But if you don't have the right, <laughs> I just feel like there should be some like romantic <laughs> music, <laughs> a build up, a slow zoom in. You can care about me. Yes. Yeah. Put a filter on our face. You can pour yourself Tweet into it. it. <laughs> but, so to that point, like you're saying though, and like like I just said, you can you can know <laughs> to that point, like I just said. <laughs> this is um, the end of the end of the road. You can tell. <laughs> 
So as I was so eloquently saying, <laughs> um, go ahead, go ahead. I'll stop interrupting. Um, <laughs> force more <laughs> bead. Aggressively force. You can you can know um, you can have every good intention, but still not know know exactly how to do it right. And so, uh, to me, yeah. these people not only cared about it well, but they, they knew what to do to get it to the right point. And I think other people did similar things. Maybe they didn't have the same uh, directive, didn't have the same ideas on how to properly do things. Um, they're all, we had lots of great meads, but yeah. these two, I mean, are just shining in that regard. So, here's what I vote we do. I think we should, three, two, one, vote. You lay down your card, okay? Well, and we'll we'll, we'll talk after. Ready, boys. I don't know that we, we need, need to. Oh yeah, <laughs> hold it around, hold it around. <laughs> I'm rolling my sleeves. So on this side, in the green little corner, and in, in the green corner. In the green corner. <laughs> number <laughs> number six. Coming in at sixteen percent alcohol, <laughs> two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> it's number six. <laughs> I think we're gonna say the gravity. Oh, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't that's that's pretty this. hard to do. This feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. Too country. I'm too country for this. Number number ten's on our red. I think we go ahead and vote. Okay. Um, are you ready to vote, Tony? Do you need a moment? Some more sips. A couple sips. No, I, don't think that's gonna, I don't think that's gonna fix anything. Get you a curly straw. I don't think it's gonna fix anything to keep drinking these. I think I just need to like think about it just for a moment more. Okay. And really make a choice, All right? You just tell me when you're ready. I'll count us down. I think I'm. I think I'm ready. Even though it, this is so, somewhat <laughs> going against my better judgment, but I'm gonna. Oh. I, <laughs> I say that like I say that meaning. I'll explain. I'll okay. explain. Yeah, it. yeah. Save it for the wrap up video. We gotta keep yeah. them coming back next week. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one, vote. Oh. Wow. Oh okay. my God. <laughs> I, it, I, there are things that could be improved here. I think this is save it for the wrap up. We got it. We're, we're going to talk about why these two, why we chose this one, and kind of go deeper, and also go backwards in time and talk about the previous ones. But the winner of this tournament is number six, which was a boysenberry mellow mel sweet. <laughs> 14%. I can't believe we were like basically, basically the exact same. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one was really well done. Uh huh. Really well done. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not gonna say anything yet. Also, really well done. But yeah, well, we can say we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. So that'll be next week. Yeah, head on to if the this might be sometime in the future. You might have already seen the previous stuff, but check out the wrap up video if you uh, if it's available, and um, make sure that you go back and check out the previous stuff because we went through this entire tournament and tasted some awesome meads. But I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who submitted a mead because uh, you're literally putting yourself out there to the world to be judged, quite literally, on YouTube. And um, you have a bunch of people like us just tasting your stuff. So bunch of amateurs. <laughs> I'm, so I'm super thankful. Thank you, thank you to everybody who submitted stuff. Um, this wrap-up video will be out soon. Thank you, BC. Thank you, Tony, for thank your you. time and, and taste testing. Um, I'm excited to now chat a little further about these things. So we'll see you over on that video. Thanks for watching.